Continuing on in section 9.8 here with example 3, we're going to use substitution to solve this system. So here we know that y equals 4 minus x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and substitute it into my other equation. So uh, instead of y, I'm going to write what it equals, 4 minus x. And I'm going to leave the rest of my equation completely unchanged. And now from here, guys, we're going to solve this the same way that we have been all chapter. So uh, because it's a quadratic, we're going to get set equal to 0. So in order to do that, I'm going to subtract a 4 and add an x. 4 minus 4 is 0. Negative x plus x is 0. So I have 0 equals x squared minus 5x plus 6. Uh, because I just have x squared here, guys, no coefficient there other than 1, I'm going to try and factor this first if I can. Uh, you could also use a quadratic formula or complete the square here. Uh, you could also use graphing. But since we're using substitution and I just have a coefficient of 1, I'm going to try and factor. So multiply to 6, add to 5, 2 and 3 here. So because I added and found the sum, my signs are going to be the same, both negative. Multiply to x squared is x and x. And again, we're going to use 2 and 3 here. Now, zero product property says the only way that I can multiply to zero is if one of my factors is zero, or my other factor is zero, or if my factors are the same, then both. So here, I'm going to add two, get x equals two, and add three to get x equals three. Now, these are my x values. So in my ordered pairs, which I'm going to have two of here, they're my x's. I'm not done though, because in my original equation, I have x's and y's. So in my final answer, I need x's and y's. So uh, to find my y values, I take my x values and I substitute them into x for one of my equations. I'm gonna use the bottom here, my linear equation. Doesn't matter which one you use. Uh, I just use that one because it's a little bit easier to plug it into just an x than into an x squared and an x. And when I plug in 3, 4 minus 3, it's going to give me 1. And again, we're going to write those as ordered pairs. So 2, 2 and 3, 1 are my solutions. And we can double check those by plugging them back in. So for example, 2 squared is 4 minus 6 times 2, 12, uh, plus 10 gives me 2. Uh, and 4 minus 2 gives me 2. Uh, 3 squared is 9 minus 6 times 3, negative 18, so negative 9, plus 10 gives me a positive 1, and 4 minus 3 gives me 1. So both of these answers check. Now feel free to pause it and give this a try if you'd like. Again, I'm going to use substitution. And I already know what y equals. y equals x squared plus 11x minus 12. So I'm going to substitute that into y in my opposite equation. Again, y equals this, x squared plus 11x minus 12. So instead of writing y, I'm going to re write what it equals. And the rest of my equation, I'm going to keep exactly the same. Now, once we get to this point, we're going to solve it the exact same way until we get that last step where we have to find our y's again. So from here on, everything's going to be the same uh, until the very end. So, uh, because it's quadratic, we're going to get it set equal to 0. I'm going to subtract 12x. I'm also going to combine my like terms here. x squared minus 1x minus 42 equals 0. Now we're going to factor. Multiply to 42 and subtract 2, 1, 6, and 7. So to get to x squared is x and x. And again, here I knew to factor because my x squared had a uh, coefficient of just 1. I didn't have a number there. If I did, I could have used the quadratic formula. Uh, here I also could have used the quadratic formula or completed the square, but factoring is going to be the fastest way usually. Uh, because I subtracted and found the difference, my signs are going to be different. And 7 is bigger, so it gets the sign in the middle. Now my zero product property says the only way that I can multiply to 0 is if one of my factors equals 0, or 
my other factor equals 0, sometimes both. So here we want to solve for x by adding 7 to get x all the way by itself and subtracting 6 to get x all the way by itself. So my x value and my order pair are 7 and negative 6. So again, from this step down to this step, nothing has changed. It's the same way we've been solving these all chapter long. The only difference now is that we also have to find our y values. So in order to do that, I take my x values and I plug them into one of my equations. It doesn't matter which one. I'm going to use my top equation here. So y minus 30 equals 12 times x, 7, and solve for y. Hundred fourteen, and I'm going to do the same thing for my second x value. Y minus thirty equals twelve times x, and again I plug my x value into my x. Simplify both sides first, and then add or subtract to get our y by itself. And again, if we plug those back into our equations, they will both work. So let's check. Quick recap here. Systems of linear and quadratic equations can be solved graphically and algebraically. Systems of linear and quadratic equations can have two solutions if, it inter if the lines intersect in two places. One solution uh, if their graphs just meet at one point, or no solutions if they never meet. And that's all I have for section 9.8.